and look what finally came in, my 30K. Now this is not a dual pack. Cena botched multiple shipments of their products here. To my supplier, Black Hills Moto, AKA Real Time Industries, and they were kind enough to split open a dual pack to give me my single so I wouldn't have to wait any longer because their singles still hadn't arrived in time. So I'm anxious to try this for a couple reasons. Number one, I wanna see if there's any better quality recording to the GP10, which is what I use with my GoPro for waterproof wireless audio. And as soon as one of my riding buddies in the area gets one, I wanna test the range to see if it's any different. I'm not real concerned about the range. I doubt it'll be any better. They still make wild claims about this, a mile, two miles, that kind of thing. But with the standard Cena disclaimer that you have to be in Death Valley to get that kind of range. So that's not anything like real world stats. It is very much like the 20S that it replaces as the flagship product. They recently came out with the 20S Evo, which Everyone that's tested I've seen said it performs exactly the same. <laughs> so it, it just seems like it's a, a manufacturing update to the 20S. You have to get this if you actually want anything different. But it uses the same style base. I've seen some people say that the base is the same. Some that have said it's different. It appears very similar at least. I think the texture here is a little different. Almost a satin. I'll pull my 20S here in a second. <clears throat> uh, I saw one person say that the boom mic here is improved on the 30K. I don't use the boom mic, so that doesn't make any difference to me. I use the little tiny Velcro mic. There isn't enough room in my helmet for this. Otherwise, I probably would because this actually gives you slightly better audio quality than the other mic option. But we have the same speakers as the 20S, so don't expect any upgrades there in the actual audio inside your helmet. It uses a dual antenna display. I'm not gonna go through all the features because quite frankly, Cena already has a video on that and if you wanna see everything, but the Bluetooth antenna is this little nub here. You no longer have to extend anything for Bluetooth communication to your phone, to the GP10, or to other regular Bluetooth comm units. This pop-up antenna here is just for the new mesh networking. So it only works if you're connecting to other 30K units. Otherwise, you never have to put this up, and I will probably never have to put this up. Maybe years down the road, if I'm on a trip or something with some other guys and they have 30Ks, I think I said 30S or it's the 30K, uh, I would use this. But for normal Bluetooth, we no longer have to do anything. I never really put it up unless I was riding with somebody. Anyway, you don't need the old Bluetooth antenna up connect to your phone or your GP10. It makes no difference. It does make a significant difference to other comm units. So. And the normal snapback tab on the back, phone button there, charging flap here. Same waterproof specs as the 20S and the 20S Evo. So as I showed in my previous video, beware. I did have over time, water get in here and really start to corrode these pin connections and that screwed up my audio very badly. Do not use alcohol to clean it. I did greatly damage this very delicate rubber gasket here on the base unit on my 20S. So just make sure that this is nice and dry. Uh, I do take it off every single time I'm done riding, stick it back on the charger. It never sits on my helmet. It never stays in any kind of wet condition, but I do ride in the rain quite a bit and it is supposed to be at least weather resistant. They don't say it's waterproof. So you just have to be conscious and make sure that these connections are always clean and dry. But like I said, do not use alcohol to clean the pins of corrosion. Just use some water and Q-tip maybe some contact cleaner would be safer not sure but other than that in the box should be the standard fare we should have some velcro for mounting the speakers charging cable car adapter here's all of our velcro bits and detachable mic all the standard stuff you get with the cena there's the mic i use right there just a little surface mount and instruction booklet, that's new. And a warranty card. So that's about it. I'm gonna go ahead and install it, put it on my helmet, and we'll see if there's any difference on the road. 
Okay, so this is going to be our baseline, and I want this video to be really useful to us motovloggers. So this is going to tell you, hey, is this worth upgrading from my 20S, which most of us have, because that's the baseline unit to get the really good audio quality that you hear now. Now, this is my tried and true setup. The GP10, which I believe still only has one firmware. The 20S, which is at right now 1.6.2 which gives the best audio quality with the GP10. Anything higher, you get those random crackle and pops. And there's nothing you can do about it. It's a problem in the firmware. Audio levels have always been good since firmware way back when. I have my phone connected also, which I always do. I use that for music and GPS and phone calls. And this GP10 is the only device connected, so you get the maximum audio quality. Now just a side note, if you are thinking about upgrading to the 30K from a 20S and you connect with a multitude of other Bluetooth users, that's to say, unless everybody, every single rider connected in your group is using a 30K, this is actually a downgrade. You get exactly the same audio quality with the huge side effect of only allowing four connections, maximum. 20S has double that. Granted, the audio quality does drop, but you actually can connect up to eight devices. On the 30K, it's a maximum of four, and that's including the GP10. So. I could only connect to three other Bluetooth riders, and I don't know anybody else yet that has a 30K or is even planning to get one. So there's the audio quality test of the baseline. I know it's going to sound good. I don't have to do any more testing of this. You guys have heard me using this setup for many years and hundreds of videos. So now I'm going to go swap everything over in the helmet to the new 30K, and we'll do a couple different tests with a couple different setups. And now we're on the new 30K. All new setup, complete with the base unit, microphone, and speakers. We're going to be listening for that snap, crackle, and pop that the later firmware had with the 20S. If that's here, that's a big problem because that's going to mean I'm going back to the 20S until it gets fixed. That absolutely ruins recording when you have crackly audio. Now, I want to see how the levels are doing. This is exactly the same setup. I've got my phone paired, and obviously it's not doing anything right now, but it does have the connection, as I always do. It just lives in my pocket or on my holder for GPS. Some interesting notes. Un uh, again, some surprising but very welcome changes. Number one, even though the speakers look the same, they're either more efficient and or they've changed the amplification because it's louder. It is about 20% louder streaming music over Pandora or playing the built-in FM audio, uh, FM radio. And that's the other big welcome change. The FM radio works. It works perfectly. The 20S was notorious for, man, it was, it seems about a 10% chance that you got one with a working radio. I went through four of them. And I never did get one that worked right. It wasn't worth sending it back again because I didn't care that much about it. But hardly anybody got working FM radios on the 20Ss. They kept saying they had hardware changes and updates and nothing fixed it. It was just mostly staticky. It was like uh, your antenna was cut off. And uh, that's all there is to it. But this one works absolutely flawlessly. Went through all my presets. I've got eight of them programmed here. They're all local stations. Never have any problem in any kind of vehicle pulling anything in. Super strong signals. And yeah, it's flawless. So yay for that. I don't know if all of the 30Ks are going to be good. If I just got lucky, like some of the people did with the 20S, or if they really did fix their hardware. Either way, I'm happy with this unit. Another welcome change is the speed of the unit and the responsiveness is noticeably better. On and off is instant now. It's like going from a 10-year-old computer to a modern one with 
shutting down windows. That's about the, the change. As soon as you just tap the two buttons to turn it off, it's, it's done. It's just like a physical switch. It's really cool. There's no waiting. I always was annoyed with that two to three second delay of turning the 20S on or off. Other than that, very minor interface changes like the, uh, the beep tone. That's really about it. Other than that, everything is very familiar and works exactly the same way as the later firmwares of the 20S. And you can see all the settings that I have for my optimal conditions up on the screen here. I did update the firmware. There was a minor point release out out of the box. I'm on 1.0.1, probably just some bug fixes. And I'm gonna check the footage right now and see if I need to make any changes and do any further tests. Hopefully not, hopefully this sounds good. And I'll give it a wrap up. Well, no shock here that Cena completely botched this yet again. Par for the course, Cena. Man, it's sad when they can't even release a product that works with their own products. On the left here, you can see the first clip I did with the 20S, totally normal. And look at those audio levels, roughly half of what they should be. And this is what happened again for the first few months that the 20S came out. I went through this crap back and forth, back and forth. And they finally released a firmware that fixed their problems. But man, somebody needs to be fired. <laughs> this is just sad. Here you have a product that's been out for years. You release a brand new flagship and it sucks. You've, you've already had a point release and you can't even fix that. And to top it all off, you guys already know, but I'm just finding out now, listening to it, that the snap, crackle, and pop is still there. Music over Pandora or playing the built And that's just horrible. So I'm going to do some more testing and see if there's anything I can do other than put on the 20S and uh, hope that they eventually fix their 30K K for crap in the future. Okay, so here's the final conclusion. Uh, number one, you're watching right now as I record on my GH5 and I've got the Rode VideoMic Pro. Now I've got the auto gain turned all the way down on the camera, but it's still going to normalize this playback. So don't concentrate so much on the audio levels you hear right now. Watch the view meter or the level meter more accurately, as I play these clips. You can see the differences here on the waveform. Just look at the heights. You can see that the loudness, this is the 20S clip. This center one here is the one you already saw, and that is with the phone connected. And then I just went out and did a quick one down the street without the phone connected. No difference on the levels. However, luckily, the one without the phone connected, so turning off Bluetooth on my phone, got rid of the snap, crackle, and pop. And that's an old trick from, I don't know, two, two and a half years ago on the 20S. So once again, they've repeated the same mistakes that they've made in the past. So it works out to a six decibel difference. And we can boost it to match the correct levels. And interestingly, it's not boosting the noise, the noise floor is the same. So what they've done in the firmware for this 20S is simply boost it for us. So, and I remember when they applied that change, like I said, this is the way out of the box the 20S was too. And it took them, I don't know how many months to boost it in the firmware. So what that means is, motor vloggers out there don't have your phone paired while you're recording and that will stop the snap, crackle, and pop, and then in editing, just apply a six dB gain, and that will fix the levels. Now, the other issue is the sound quality itself. It's muffled to me. Here, I'll play a clip from the 20S, and just listen to the overall sound quality. To me, it's got a lot more treble. However, it also sounds a little overdriven. It sounds a little like, not so much a noise gate, but maybe too much compression. The 20S, here, here we go. I'll put the mic here near the speaker. Actually can connect up to eight devices. On the 30K, it's a maximum of four. Okay, so that's the 20S. 
Now here is the corrected level, so that should sound exactly the same, but just listen to the overall quality and the timber of it. This is again, all 30K hardware, the new mic, the new bass, and the 30K obviously. Glorious for man, it was. It seems about ten percent chance that you got one with a working radio. I went through four of them. So you could hear the snap, crackle, and pop in there. But I'll play these back to back here for you, so you can more easily hear the difference. I'll just go back and forth. Here's a twenty S. New quality with the huge side effect of only. And here's the thirty K. It was. It seems about 10% chance that you got one with a working radio. I went through four of them and I never did. So that is a stark difference. And then just playing this clip, I'll just show you that it did completely eliminate the snap, crackle, and pop. Audio level check, 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 check one, check two. This is with out the phone. We're gonna see if this is any different. Checking the level. I have a feeling Cena just sucks balls yet again. Nothing new, why should I expect? So I think for now, I'll just live with this. I'll make sure I always have my phone unpaired while I'm recording, which isn't a big deal as far as function. It's just kind of annoying, something you shouldn't have to do. Now, one quick tip for anybody that actually wants to buy one or any other Cena gear or other types of communication gear, big plug for Black Hills Moto. This is where I got my 30K huge savings off MSRP, full warranty. They're a complete uh, legit dealer. You know, nothing, no gray market, like the stuff you find on eBay, just saves a lot of money. Don't buy directly from Cena or online at the big stores that just charge retail. Never pay retail. I'm a member of that club. <laughs> I have no affiliation with them, just passing on a good deal. I've used them for years. That's it. See you guys next time.